No pianist likes practicing scales. I think no musician on any instrument likes practicing scales. Many of us had to do so for a long time as kids, playing daily upward and downward lines of notes before actually beginning to practice the pieces we were playing. Those lines were repetitive, they were not fun, and what seemed worse, they were not music. But scales are, or at least could be, music. This is something we realized a bit later, encountering compositions by Beethoven or Haydn or Mozart, where scales were plentiful and were very much an integral part of the musical structure. If we treated them as exercise, we would lose a lot of the potential of the piece. Those were scales that had to have character, directionality, life. Here is the opening of Beethoven's first piano concerto. A chord, three notes, and then a scale up before the melody continues. It's just a C major scale, the one that most kids begin with, and yet here it's an integral part of the music, or as an extreme example, the theme from the famous Pas de Deux from Tchaikovsky's ballet The Nutcracker, which is nothing more than a slow descending scale. Later, we discovered more scales, including such strange ones as the octatonic scale, which had eight notes instead of seven. Or the whole tone scale, which had six notes instead of seven. And which composers, for some unknown reason, love to use when they depict underwater scenes. Others, dating back to the Renaissance, disappeared from you for a few hundred years, only to make a comeback in the 20th century in the music of Ravel, Stravinsky and Bartok. Opposite these flavorful scales was the chromatic scale, the one which covers every single note on the keyboard. You can start it wherever you want, you can end it on any note you wish, it will always sound the same. Because of this quality, it's quite bland in itself, but precisely because of this blandness, or adaptability we could say, it is so commonly used. The name chromatic comes from the Greek chroma, colour. Those notes were deemed to add colour to the basic scales for mood and expression. The blue note in blues and jazz, though not related to this etymology, has precisely the same kind of colour adding function. The chromatic scale appeared already in the Baroque period, mostly as a descending bass line, which formed the basis of beautiful harmonic progressions. Liszt, as did many Romantic composers, loved the chromatic scale. It's hard to find a composition of his in which it didn't appear. At an extreme, he could build entire works around it, such as the etude called La Leggerezza, Lightness. Its theme is highly chromatic already, and later it dissolves into flurries of chromatic scales over the same bass line. including a majestic section in the middle, in which the left hand has the theme and the right hand is playing two chromatic scales simultaneously.
And to finish the end of Bartok's third piano concerto, a kind of apotheosis of the chromatic scale, the orchestra is playing repeated cadence chords, while the piano is playing an ascending chromatic scale in octaves. An awfully exciting way to finish a piece.